Run the Trash Elf. Once upon a time, an elf mother died, and her three elf sons were left orphans. The two lazy elder brothers considered themselves very clever and special and called the youngest elf Runt. They convinced him he was stupid and worthless and must work to pay for their food and clothes and a room to live in. With a wheelbarrow, Runt hauled away the trash and garbage that the pixies and fairies and dwarfs and all the other creatures piled up. In the forest where he dug holes in the dump to bury the trash and garbage, he saw many strange things, but the saddest was an elf princess riding in a magnificent carriage, but with the most heartbroken, downcast face he'd ever seen. Some friendly flying squirrels told him that the elf king refused to let her marry any of the elf princes because none had a palace wonderful enough for his daughter to live in. One morning, Runt bent to pick up his shovel in the forest when he thought he spied an especially big leaf, but discovered instead a brown yellow rag of cloth with lines and arrows and a big red mark like two cross swords. When he brought it home, Runt's brothers knew it for a treasure map, snatched it from him, and followed it to a black rock marked with scratches like two cross swords. Underneath, they made him dig until he struck a box containing a sack of gold coins, a second sack of silver coins, and a cracked red pottery dragon, hollow and empty, with a hole on top. The older brothers rushed off to town with their loot, leaving Runt alone. Though cracked and dirty, something about the dragon caught his eye. He winked and thought maybe the dragon winked back, but he couldn't be sure. He slipped his only penny through the slot in the dragon's back, and the clinking coin charmed him, but he thought no more about it. The next day, his newly rich brothers showed him the fine clothes and fancy watches and other trinkets they'd brought, and that very evening they moved to much nicer lodgings, leaving him alone. For the first time, with his earnings from hauling the trash and garbage, Runt bought food only for himself and the other coins he dropped into the dragon. That night, he went to sleep, wishing he had a fine red hat, one nice enough to please a princess. And when he woke in the dark to get a drink of water, was astonished to see that the dragon had turned into a beautiful red hat. But when he rose the next morning, the hat had disappeared and he only saw the dragon though it did seem just a teeny tiny bit bigger. The next night, he dropped more coins through the slot and went to sleep thinking he really didn't want a red hat after all, but wishing instead he had a fine blue boat with a white sail lovely enough for a princess to sail in. Again, he woke in the dark, this time seeing the dragon had transformed into a marvelous boat, but when he rose the next morning, the boat was gone and he saw only the dragon, though again, it looked a tiny bit bigger. For many days and weeks and months, Runt continued to feed his dragon coins, slept wishing he owned one wonderful thing or another, a different thing almost every night, but woke only to see the dragon, though a dragon that somehow seemed just a tad larger, just a smidgen fatter, and with just a teeny bit happier smile than the night before. Runt's brothers didn't visit again, but the flying squirrels told him that both had wasted all their money, then borrowed more money than they could ever pay back, and when the king threatened them with prison, they had run away to hide in the dark mountain caves. Runt kept hauling trash and garbage, and his dragon got so fat and full, Runt could hardly fit in another coin until one day when he squeezed one in the top, three dropped out the back, almost as if the dragon had pooped them. That night, for the third night in a row, he went to sleep wishing he had a knife shiny enough to impress a princess. For the third time, thought maybe the dragon had looked like a knife in the dark, but woke to find only the dragon looking bigger than ever. And also, the three coins that wouldn't fit inside, plus three more brand new ones. 
So that very day, he used the six coins to purchase exactly the knife he wanted. That same evening, again he had trouble squeezing all the coins he'd earned into the dragon's back. But this time, six coins popped out and another six coins, which made twelve coins, twice as many. And every few days, Runt bought himself a new jacket or new boots or something else a princess might approve of. And as long as the dragon was full, the coins kept coming. Then one fine day, as he buried trash in the forest dump, the marvelous carriage rolled by, and Runt again saw the elf princess, now looking sadder than ever. That evening, he fell asleep thinking of her. When he woke the next morning, the dragon had completely disappeared. In its place, Runt discovered heaps of shiny coins, so many coins, Runt could hardly believe he had saved them all and realized he'd never again have to wear calling trash or garbage and wondered how in the world he could ever spend so many coins. Then suddenly, the coins began to click and bounce and arrange themselves until they were neatly stacked like the towers of a beautiful castle, enough bright coins to purchase a palace worthy of the elf king's daughter and he did and they lived happily ever after runt the trash elf read by rahima johnson copyright 2015